Today something is coming your way. I will receive. Somebody there, I will receive. The Lord bless you through and through in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for this blessed moment and blessed hour. We're asking, Lord, that your blessing will reach everyone's life today in Jesus' name. Lead us in your word. Teach us in your word. Transform our lives and set our feet in the path that leads to progress and to purity and to power. In Jesus' name. We do not know when Christ will come. You are preparing us for your coming. I will pray, Lord, every one of us will be ready for that moment, for that hour, in Jesus' name. And should it not come any time this year, we we'll pray, Lord, when the saints go marching in, every one of us will be part of the crowd to move in, into glory at the rapture in Jesus' name. Whenever you come, for individuals or for the whole church, keep us ready. And let your blessings be poured upon our lives today in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 11. I was looking at verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11. Reading from verse 13. These all died in faith. Not having received the promises. But having seen them afar off. And were persuaded of them. That they and they and they embraced them. And they confessed that they were strangers. And pilgrims on the earth. What a verse to start a message. It says, This all died in faith, not having received the promises. Look at verses 39 and 40. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. It's talking about the Old Testament prophets. Old Testament patriarchs, Old Testament people, and he said they were looking ahead. They wanted to receive the promises, but their own promises for their own time, for their own generation, for their own dispensation was given to them. But the Lord was choosing a kind of people, the Gentiles, you and I. And he has reserved something great for us. And so when you read in verse 13, they died, they left. They quit and they passed on from this world without receiving the promise. Here it comes in verse 39 and it says the same thing and this all. Having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better sin for us. That they without us should not the made perfect God having prepared some better thing for us. That better thing is coming. And so when you look at the people in the Old Testament and you say, but well, they trusted God. But they believed in God. But they trusted that he'll give them this and this and that because that thing was promised and it was not done. You do not go back to the Old Testament, Old Covenant, Old Dispensation and say, maybe too I will not receive. You will receive. Because better things are waiting for the people in the New Dispensation. Come back to verse 13. I'm reading the, verse, the last line there in verse 13. There were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Look at verse 14 now. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned, but now they desire a better country. We're getting there. That he is an heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to call them, to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. Is the latter part of that verse 13 I want you to pay attention on. They confessed that they were 
strangers and pilgrims pilgrims and strangers in this earth and the lord wants us to understand that we're passing through this world and through this earth and we're going to the better country we're going to the heavenly country look at first peter chapter 2 and verse 11 First Peter chapter 2 And we're reading verse 11 It says dearly beloved I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims As strangers and pilgrims It tells us very clearly and pointedly That we are strangers and pilgrims in this world Who is a pilgrim? A pilgrim is somebody on a journey We're coming from the city of destruction We're moving on from our past and we're going through this world and we're going to the promised land that means then we're pilgrims in my father's house and many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again so that i receive you and take you on to myself it tells us that we're hoping for that day we're hoping for that city we're hoping for that better country and because we're traveling on and we're getting there i am getting there i said i am getting there that's why it says we're pilgrims and you want to be a wise pilgrim a wise pilgrim who is a wise pilgrim the person that faces the direction of travel here is where i am going and i face that direction and you are focused and you are faithful and you are fervent in the things of the Lord and you do not allow the things of this world to tie you down because you are a wise pilgrim who is a foolish pilgrim a foolish pilgrim is the one that is forgetful he forgets why he started the journey he forgot he's forgotten why he became a christian he's forgotten why he came into the kingdom he's forgotten the promise of eternal life everlasting life and he forgets that he has led the perilous land he has led the city of destruction and then he's either slowing down or he's turning back or he's sitting down and he's not making progress we're going to the wise pilgrims in Jesus name we're going to talk today on the spiritual profit and progress of wise pilgrims the spiritual profit and progress of wise pilgrims already it has ascertained in the word of God who we are strangers and pilgrims in this world and we're journeying on we're traveling on to a better country to an heavenly country to the pleasant land to the holy land to the land of promise to paradise to heaven and there are three points we're going to talk about number one sustain purity and preservation of nourished baptized pilgrims sustain purity it's not just an initial deposit of purity and then after that we'll forget purity it must go on because who are the people that will get to the heel of the lord who are the people that will abide and dwell and live in that holy place they that have clean hands and a pure heart sustain purity and preservation of nourished baptized pilgrims you yeah, pilgrim you have to be nourished in the word of god you have to feed on the word of god you have been strengthened by the strength of the heavenly manner that comes into your life every day and every week and throughout your journey from here to glory nourished baptized the people who are baptized unto christ they are baptized in the spirit they are baptized in the fire in the fire of the holy ghost and the seal and the fervency is there and they know where they're going and they're focused on the place they're going uh, sustain purity and preservation of nourished baptized previous point number two solemn paradox and peril of negligent busy pilgrims they are pilgrims that get sidetracked there are pilgrims that they see something on the way and they say hey this is interesting and they're very busy on those things on the way on the way to heaven they slow down their journey 
they stopped in their journey they concentrate on non-essentials on the way very very busy but not, they are now negligent of the calling God has called them they are negligent of the journey that they are pursuing they are negligent of the goal they want to reach solemn paradox and peril of negligent busy pilgrims number three spiritual profit and progress somebody there is making progress this year I am making progress in Jesus name say it for yourself spiritual profit and progress of new bible believing pilgrims bible believing pilgrims so coming to number one tell me number one there in your notes so same purity and preservation of nourish baptized pilgrims we're looking at uh, that first peter chapter 2 again first peter chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 11 first peter chapter 2 verse 11 it tells us in verse 11 dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul there's a battle there are many people that do not know there's a battle because satan does not want them to get to heaven satan wants to stop you on your journey satan wants to retard or delay or slow down or totally stop the journey so that you will not get to heaven and many people do not understand this uh, internal war that is going on and this internal hindrance that is going on and this particular personal war that is going on satan is warning against your soul and you're a pilgrim you're a stranger and you neglect all that and then you are toying with any other thing it says how wise will that be look at verse 1 wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakers as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby to grow in strength desire the sincere milk of the world and to grow in power desire the sincere milk of the world and to, uh, to grow in your focus in your attention desire the sincere milk of the world and to grow in faith the faith that will make you jump every hurdle and climb every mountain and fly over any hindrance that faith faith coming by hearing hearing by the word of god desire the sincere milk of the word the word that will cleanse you purge you purify you and make you ready for the coming of the Lord desire this is the milk of the world it cleanses us whereby shall a man cleanse his way a young man cleanses his way by taking heed according to your word and then it says in verse 3 if so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious the grace that saves the grace that sanctifies and the grace that strengthens and the grace that baptizes you in the Holy Ghost because it's by the grace of God we're saved by the grace grace of God were sanctified by the grace of God were filled with the Holy Ghost that promise is unto you it is a promise that he gives unto us and when he fulfills that promise what grace will receive from the Lord look at verse 5 he also has lively stones because you are saved you come alive because without coming alive a dead wood cannot move a dead man cannot move if you do not have the life of Christ in you you're not even a pilgrim yet but it is when you realize you are dead in sins and trespasses it is when you realize you are dead in the old man it's when you realize that death the deathness of this world has been upon you and then you say Lord Jesus I confess in myself I am dead only in Christ the risen Savior do I come alive I hold on to to him i believe him i receive his forgiveness i receive his eternal life then you come alive and he says ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house is building us up every service it builds us up every prayer it builds us up every word it builds us up at home you read the word of god is building you up everything you read that encourages you enlightens you edifies you is building you up building us up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer to offer all spiritual sacrifices only those spiritual sacrifices are acceptable to god by jesus christ look at verse 9 here in verse 9 it says but ye are a chosen generation that is after you have turned away from sin 
you turn to the Savior and you receive him a definite way not that I'll be coming to church are you born again? well I, I really don't know I don't understand this being born again have you at any particular time in your life since you were born into this world have you at any time come to the Lord to say this day and you know the time and you know the date and you know the moment this time I come to you my Savior I know that I am a sinner and that I cannot save myself I have heard the good news the gospel that you Christ should die for me in particular on the cross of Calvary at this time a moment of time this day a particular day in this place a day you can remember a place you can remember this day I surrender my life to Christ I receive your forgiveness I receive your eternal life Lord Jesus I believe that your promise will not fail whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved I am saved and the Spirit of God will be a witness in your heart a change has come there will be that joy of salvation you remember the time you remember the day if you don't have any time like that to remember you need to go to the Lord today if you don't have any day like that to remember you go to the Lord today because you might be turning over a new leaf changing little by little by little and copying the children of God and talking like they talk and reading like they read and walking like they walk and putting your hand where they put their hand and you think that converts you that there's no salvation there but that moment of time and then the spirit of God is saying now you are a child of God not only that there will be another evidence if any man be in Christ is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things have become new you were fighting before the urge to fight is no more there you were having conflict before the urge to have conflict is no more there you had bitterness and hatred before the desire to fight with anybody have any conflict with anybody is no more there you were a Jezebel before, a temptress before. You want to make a man fall. The urge to do that is no more there. You're thinking of heaven and you're thinking of glory and you're thinking of when Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, will come. There is a change on the inside, inside you. The Spirit of God, it brings peace in your heart. All the harassment of the devil, all the restlessness within you, everything is gone. The cha it's a change of direction. Now you're thinking of heaven. You're thinking of when you will come, I will go with him. And as things that other people can see, your dressing will change. Nobody has to, you know, sit you down and say, don't wear this, don't wear You will just know. The Spirit of God will say, now you are a child of God. All things have become new. That's what he's saying. And now he says, you are a chosen generation. He has chosen you. Because of choosing Christ to be your Savior and to be your Lord, He too he has chosen you. Look at that, a royal priesthood. You are now a priest unto the Lord. And it is not just ordinary priests, it's a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that He should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's the thing that takes place. And once that has taken place, we say, Praise the Lord. A new life has come. Praise the Lord. I come alive in Christ. Now you are a pilgrim. Look at verse 21. For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also has left you, has uh, suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. All the time now, your mind is, what will Christ do? Where will Christ go? How will Christ talk? What will, how will Christ interact? How will Christ fellowship? How will Christ pray? Because now, you are following Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then he tells us, look at uh, second, uh, second Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 13. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 13 the pilgrim he has a sustained purity the pilgrim he has a sustained preservation of that which he has now got 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 13 here in verse 13 it says but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you why? 
spreading the love of the Lord. Because God has from the, the beginning chosen you to salvation. God has from the beginning of her coming to you. And Paul the apostle could see those people. He said, the moment I came to you and I preached the good news to you, you didn't waste time at all. From that beginning of hearing the gospel, it chose you to salvation. And now through sanctification, through sanctification, you see that after you are born again, you will not just say, praise the Lord, I am saved. Praise the Lord, my sins are forgiven. Now I can commit more sins and go back to church next Sunday and say, God, we have done what we shouldn't have done. We have not done what we should have done. Forgive me again. No, sir. You are saved. It saves you from sin. You are saved. It saves you from sinning. You are saved. It saves you from repeating the old life again. And then that's an external experience. All the stealing, that's external. All the lying, that's external. All the adultery, that's external. All the fornication, that's external. All the drunkenness, that's external. All those external branches of the tree of sin has now been cut down. And the place looks free. You look at that area now. Where is that tree? All the branches are gone. All those things we we'll see here, uh, cluttering the ground, everything is gone, but there's still the root there. The root is still there. And now that's why sanctification comes in. Now, the digger of the Lord, the producer of the Lord, will uproot that thing. And when that thing is uprooted, that is the second experience is called sanctification. And here it says, the Lord has chosen you to salvation. And then it talks about through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Now the spirit comes in, the place now is empty and the place is pure. Number one is peace. You have peace with God through Jesus Christ, you're saved. Number two is purity. You're sanctified, it purifies your heart. Number three is power. The power of the Holy Ghost. If you have not received that power, that power has now come. I said that power has now come. For you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses of it, both in Jerusalem and Judea, and then to the uttermost part of the earth. And look at Second uh, Timothy here. Second Timothy, I'm reading from chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two, and we're looking at verse twenty-one. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-one. If a man therefore purge himself from these. If a man therefore purge himself from these. You know mothers that try to clean up their children. Good job. But you see when you transfer that to the spiritual. And you are not taking your bath. And you are trying to clean up other people. You concentrate on other people. You labor on other people. Clean them up. Purify them. Purge them. And meanwhile... Your life is not what it ought to be. And the Lord is saying, if a man will forget all the other people he wants to cleanse, he wants to purge, he wants to purify. And if a man will purge himself from all these things that will hinder him. And that will not allow him to be a clean pure, new, renewed pilgrim. If a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified. That's the word again. A sanctification. There's salvation. There's peace of God. There's forgiveness. There's eternal life. There's a ticket to heaven. There's a fitness for heaven. Salvation is a ticket for heaven. But sanctification is a fitness for heaven that it fits you. He equips you and prepares you and says, Now you are ready. Shall the trumpet sound? You are ready. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor. He is uh, purified and sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Then he says in verse 22, Flee also youthful laws. You see, when you are saved, you will not want to be staying around temptation. Around lost, around evil sin, and then a kind of dragging your feet. There's somebody there in the corner, an object of temptation, but there's something in your heart that rebels against that. That's not right. Why is she like that? 
Why is she exposing that? Why is she exhibiting that? Why is that man exhibiting that? They want they're exhibiting that to attract your attention. Say, no, my heart is no more there. And then you turn away. Turn away my heart from beholding vanity. You're saved. But now, in your heart, there must still be that magnet. You remember that thing. And then it's becoming a problem to you. You go back to Calvary. You say, Lord, I don't even want to have this magnet inside me. That although I've turned my mind, turned my eyes away from beholding vanity, I want the magnet from within to even be totally eradicated. So that that should not be a problem to me anymore. That's why I say, no, you flee youthful laws and you follow righteousness. You follow faith. You follow charity and you follow peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, out of a sanctified heart. It will happen. I said it will happen. And when it happens, what joy you will have, what freedom you will have. You'll be able to say, Praise the Lord, I am saved. You'll be able to say, Praise the Lord. I am sanctified. There is a freedom within. And I said the totality of this freedom within that wherever you are, you'll be able to say, Should the Lord come any moment? There's nothing that says, Lord, don't come now, don't come now. I have this to settle. Everything is settled. The old account is settled. Long ago, settled in your heart, settled in your spirit, and settled in your life. Peace. And purity. It tells us uh, here in uh, First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five. Pilgrims need to understand this. Otherwise, you know, if you say you're a pilgrim and you're traveling, and you have the weight of guilt on your mind, the weight of condemnation on your mind, and the weight of the shackles of a uh, sin. Be certain sin in your life. You cannot run well and you cannot move well, but it is when you're saved, you're sanctified, there's peace, there's purity, and you're a pilgrim. You'll be able to move, you'll move freely. Look at this in a first uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, nobody has to interpret that to you. As a child of God, if you're a real pilgrim, you know that all this is evil will hinder your movement to heaven. The only thing you have in your mind, because you are risen with Christ, therefore you desire those things above. And because you desire those things above, anything that is evil, anything that will tie you down, anything that will hinder you from getting to that glorious place, you say, no, it will not be. Even the appearance of evil. You are not really sure it is evil. You are not really sure it is bad. You are not really sure it is going to stop, but it smells like poison. It smells like, um, you know, acid. It smells like something that is not acceptable. Just the odor, just the smell, just the appearance, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you how? Holy, entirely, completely. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithfully heed the seed that calleth you. Tell me the rest. Also will do it. He will do it. I said he will do it. When he does it, he sets you free, completely free. Number one is the peace. Number two is the purity. Number three is the power. Power is coming. All those, uh, whatever they call them, evil spirits, demons, whatever, they are running up before you even say anything. And when you stand up to mention the name of Jesus, it will be like you are the only one that knows the name of Jesus. They call the name of Jesus, but they are not saved because they are dead. What comes out of them is dead. And because they are feeling guilty, there's a weight that is pulling them down. And when they say Jesus, it doesn't go beyond the ceiling, but you're saved, you're sanctified, you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, and the power of God is there. You mention Jesus, oh, you say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, and you I know. Let me go, I'm leaving. They will leave. Sickness will leave. Evil spirit will leave. 
all those powers of darkness they will leave in jesus name you know when you have this power i'm talking about i'm going to read it you see it yourself when you have this power i'm talking about if they meet you in the day you will knock them down if they meet you in the night they're waiting until you sleep you say i'm asleep but my heart is awake you know when you sleep if you are baptized in the holy ghost the holy ghost in you does not sleep and the angels watching over you they do not sleep and even though you are sleeping and they come and they try to sneak in and they want to put any hand on you they will strike fire and something there will burn. Look at, look at it yourself. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 11 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 3, we're looking at verse 11. It says in verse 11, I did baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Tell me the rest. And with fire, holy ghost and fire, holy ghost and fire, holy ghost and fire. And when that fire comes, it will burn every chaff out of your life, burn every sickness out of your life, and burn every infirmity out of your life. And all those things, I'm not sure about this, I'm not sure about that. Holy ghost fire comes, it will burn everything away in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, I, I know some people, they say, uh, Pastor, I'm saved. I say, tell me the story. I'm sanctified. I said, keep on talking. It says, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then I said, uh, what have you come for now? They say, Pastor, I'm, uh, I want you to pray for me. I said, ah, but you're baptized in the Holy Ghost now. It says, yes, uh, but something is walking over my body. And uh, something is seizing my brain. And something is uh, taking my intestine. And something is, uh, you know, making my blood to be polluted. And I didn't go anywhere, but something is uh, telling me that have HIV I say but where is the fire the fire will burn today and all those things you know you know many people they don't understand and this kind of Christian life I say but how are you a pilgrim and what power do you have fire has come power fire fire power and when it comes over there look at verse 12 it says whose fire is in the sun and he will thoroughly purge his flow and gather his wheat into the Ghana and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire fire will be burning continually inside your soul you know somebody says i'm baptized in the holy ghost and you know we we'll say we're going to pray now and i was saying jesus name in jesus name and as you look at the man baptized in the holy ghost is already snoring he cannot pray for 10 minutes and is baptized in the holy ghost a man baptized in the holy ghost he cannot have quiet time if he kneels down like this thank you jesus i'm saved thank you jesus i'm sanctified thank you jesus i'm baptized in the holy ghost and then he is trying to read uh, you know 10 verses of scripture for personal quiet time is reading one line two times but that's the Holy Ghost and then after that he tries to pray and uh, you know the wife will come and wake him up and say eh, sir look at the time well, for what ah I was having quiet time and are you saying yes sir I'm saved sanctified yes sir I'm sanctified but that, oh, sir 19 such and such I was baptized in the Holy Ghost why don't you repack your note today why don't you check up again today because that thing will not carry you anywhere i'm telling you that there's something coming your way today that will carry you up that will move you on and all those things that have come inside your heart fire will come today you know today we're going to pray if you're going to pray where are you i said we're going to pray and then after some time don't go home don't go home because today today power generator power is coming inside you the bulldozer power is coming inside you so don't go away today after we finish preaching then you pray for yourself and then by the grace of god i don't always say this but i'll tell you i'm loaded for you today and then we're going to pray and something will happen to you this pilgrimage you will walk free nothing will touch your life and then satan will see you he'll think he's the old man and then satan will dodge from you from today because when power comes authority comes in your life anointing that breaks every you comes upon your life you're saved peace with god 
you are sanctified purity of heart and then you are baptized in the Holy Ghost the power of the Holy Ghost look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 4 in verse 4 it says and being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait you see that but wait there are many people who are in a hurry i don't know what why they're in a hurry it says but wait for the promise of the father which says he ye have ye have heard then it says for john truly baptized with water but but tell me now but he shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence. look at verse 8 it says in verse 8 but he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come, He will come. After that the Holy Ghost is come, He will come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in all Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. It will happen. I look here at First John chapter three. First John chapter three, and I'm reading from verse one. Beloved, behold. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not beloved now, are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man, every man, every man. Anybody expecting the coming of the Lord there? I said, is anybody there expecting the coming of the Lord? Look at this. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Are you going to go to heaven without purity, without holiness? Are you going to meet the Lord when he comes without this purity of heart? Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. What does that mean? Verse 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. It says, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. You are saved, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. You are sanctified, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Hey, many people are calling fake salvation. They say telling lies. They're still stealing. They're committing adultery. They're fighting. They cannot deal without secret drinking, drunkenness. They cannot deal without secret smoking, marijuana. I'm saved, I'm saved. Look at this whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous, he that committeth sin is of the devil. Don't cover up. Don't say, I'm a leader. I'm a worker. Ah, Samson also was a leader and a worker. Don't say, I've been here for a long time. Yes, I know, Achan has been there for a long time. But it says over here, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that she might destroy the works of the devil. This is the day. I said, this is the day. If you have been weak and the devil tied you up with the cords of sin, secret sin, private sin, that work of the devil will be destroyed today. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, no, it's not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Now you've seen very clearly that we need to have purity, sustained purity, as well as preservation. We're nourished in the word, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
were born of the Spirit, blessed in the Spirit, baptized in the Spirit, were on our way. I'm on my way to heaven. I said, I'm on my way to heaven. Look at this point number two. You know, this is solemn, solemn paradox and peril of negligent, busy pilgrim. Why is it a paradox? You think that if somebody is busy, that fellow will be on top. Is busy, is busy on this, is busy on this. It's all life, it's almost about spiritual things. And it's, uh, you know, gets there and gets there and gets there, but it's negligent about a particular thing. I'm reading to you from First Kings chapter 20. First Kings chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 39. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man. If by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. As thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. Do you know that a person can be too busy? Look up here for a moment. Now this section talks to everyone. 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 And it talks to deeper life more than any other church anybody in this nation anybody in this continent that knows the church deep and life will know that we're not just deep and life church we're busy life church and because we're busy we think that's the way to do things and over the years being busy and busy and busy has taken over our lives now busy does not mean deep busy does not mean spiritual busy does not mean we're all right we're okay you can be busy and be shallow you can be busy and be superficial you can be busy and you can be negligent. This man here said, as thy servant was busy here and there, the one I was to watch over, he was gone. But don't think about the other one you are to watch over now. Your own soul you are to watch over, that soul is gone. Have you noticed, uh, you know, those who are so busy and a very important essential thing, uh, they do not mind, they do not take care of. You know, that you can be so busy and gain Sodom and yet lose your soul. It happened to Lord's family. You can be so busy and serve in the field and not sit at his feet. You're like a mother, combat about many things. But you're not like Mary, that will say, I need to take care of my spiritual life. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Even when you come to church, and you're hearing the word of God, what you are to do after the service, good thing, not bad thing. Pastor, finish in time. There's a marriage committee for me to attend. Pastor, finish in time. There is a meeting for us to attend. And there are people that they belong to this committee and this committee and this committee and that committee. And every hour of the day, every day of the week is busy. And there is no time for their personal life. There's no time for their soul. They're busy on the flock. And they neglect their family. They're busy on work. And they neglect their work of the Lord. The work of the Lord. The work of the Lord. And there's no work with God. They're busy feeding other people's souls. And they're not feeding their own soul. They're famished in their souls. That's why you look at this solemn paradox and the peril of negligent busy pilgrims. I come to Song of Solomon chapter 1. Song of Solomon chapter 1. 
and we're reading from verse 6. Song of Solomon chapter 1. We're looking at verse 6. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. And they made me the keeper of vineyards in the plural. But my own vineyard have I not kept. Look at that. My mother's children, my brothers and sisters, they were angry with me. You thought they were pleasant with you. They were nice to you. Because they want to walk the willing horse to death. And this man is, is always available. And you call him, what are you doing, sir? I'm doing this, I'm doing this, but anything you want me to do again, I'm available. They load it on him. Another person calls him and he says, now this is available again. I, well, I, I'm almost, you know, to my throat. It's like the walk is, I, I'm just inside it, but I'm available. I'm available. I'm consecrated. You load it on him. He said, those who do that, my mother's children, actually, they were angry with me. They hated me. They wanted me to neglect my soul. They wanted me to neglect my family. They wanted me to neglect my own vineyard. They wanted me to overlook that I'm a pilgrim. I have a responsibility to get to heaven myself. And they made me keeper of vineyards. And my own vineyard have I not kept. I'm going to show you. Look at that now. Look at Judges chapter 8. We're looking at Gideon. Judges chapter 8 And I was looking at verse 4 Judges chapter 8 They made me keep our vineyards But my own vineyard Have I not kept Judges chapter 8 I'm reading verse 4 and, and it says And Gideon came to Jordan And he passed over He and the 300 men That were with him Faint and yet pursue them That's a busy man That's a busy man and that's a committed man. That's a consecrated man. That's a man that says, I'm going to put my neck to the yoke. It doesn't matter because I'm going to do it. Well, so far, so good. Faith and yet pursuing. But the other side of the story is here. Now look at verse 24. In verse 24, and Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you. That she would give me every man the earring of his prey, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And in verse 25, and they answered, We will willingly give them. And then, and they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the uh, earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold beside the ornaments and the colors and the purple raiment that was on the king of Midian and beside the chains that were about the camel's necks and Gideon made an effort thereof and put it in a city even in Ophrah and all Israel all Israel all Israel went a warring after it which sin became a snare unto Gideon and to his house the man was busy it was busy. It was busy with the 300. Those were 300 consecrated men. But they had no time to check up the law of God anymore. The word of God anymore. It had become busy life in religion. Think about yourself. Are you like that? And you look at this Gideon. What became of him? He became an idol worshiper. And led the whole nation back into idol worship. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, and it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went a warring after Bealim and made Be 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 Beeroth 
their God. And the children of the, and the children of the say, Remember not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. His, his life was lost. His labor was lost. Everything he did was lost. Because you know why? He was so busy, uh, he, you know, pursuing and yet fainting. And they went back into idolatry and the whole nation forgot God. You don't want to walk like that. You want to slow down a little bit, you know. How do you spend your Sunday? Somebody belongs to the marriage committee. And that same person belongs to the choir. That same person belongs to, is also a local pastor of a local church. And is also, you know, looking into that and looking into this. And for money, before you even come here in the morning, he has to be here because he's the choir. And then after the service, they're pulling him here. They're, they're, they're at the are coming room they expect you here and there and the, no there's not not even the time to eat or to do anything and if we say my brother come back come back a little sit down a little pastor what have i done i want to serve the lord i want to die on the world i don't want to care for my soul don't worry about my salvation don't worry about my purity don't worry about my being few or the only ghost i just want to work 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 every bone in my in my body is crying out work 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 Walk and be lost, you are not going to be lost. That's why we'll pull you back and say, No, come on, sit down here. Some people have forgotten how to sit down. They have forgotten how to pray. They have forgotten how to take care of their own soul. Because that has become a habit now. And it is eating up the very life of deep and life Bible church. We are going to turn everything around in Jesus name. And you know all these that were saying sometimes. Uh, people don't understand. They think uh, we are doing evil. They think we are punishing somebody. When you tell him please step aside and pray for your soul. This activity is too much. Much. You're dying. You're fainting. And your life is not what it used to be. Second Kings chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 10. Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning him, the house of Ahab. For the Lord has done that which is spake by his servant Elijah. So Jehu, that's his name, he slew all the, all the, all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel and all the, all his great men and his uh, king's folks and his priests and until he let none remaining. That's great. That's wonderful. Jehu, you're doing well. Let's follow him. Verse 15. And when he was uh, departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he, he lighted, he saluted him, and he said unto him, Is thine heart right as my heart with thine heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is, if it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. And then he said in verse 16, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So the mage him ride in his chariot and seal us. Come and see my zeal for the Lord. So he did all that he needed to do, but the man was busy. The man was busy. Come to verse 26 now. In verse 26, and he brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burnt them. That's great. And they break down the image of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made each draught house unto this day. And Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Good or bad? Tell me out loud. Good or bad? That was great. That was good. That was glorious. That was wonderful. Look at verse 29. How be it? But... In any case, look at him now closely. How be it from the seas of Jeroboam, the sons of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu depart not from after them, to which the golden calves that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. Look at verse 31. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, 
which made Israel to sin. What is the result or what is the reward of being busy and busy and busy? A person that is so busy, salvation is gone and is saying, let me walk, let me walk, let me alone. I'm very busy. And there's no sanctification there. There's anger. The fellow is fighting with the wife at home. The fellow is uh, fighting with the husband at home. There is anger in the house. There's fighting in the house. There is evil in the house. But I'm a worker. I'm a worker. Look at the time. I promise my Lord I'll never get late. I'll never get late. Ah, it says when you bring your gift to the altar. Today you are going to be late. And you remember that your wife has ought against you. Leave your gift at the altar and settle with your wife. Settle with your husband. I'll never be late. I'm going. Everybody knows me. I'm always there. You're always there, but you're not there. You're always there, but you'll miss the rapture. You're always there, but the purity of heart and the purity of life is gone. You are busy, but you are not spiritual. And it says, Jehu there was so busy, but he took no heed to the commandments of the Lord, that all the idols of Baal, he, you know, nullified that, but the other Baal, the other one, which is not Baal, he was still worshipping idol. You cancel your crush idol A, and you're still worshipping idol B. You see, and I'll worship her. That's why the Lord has said, come back now to um, Songs of Solomon chapter 1. And I'm reading this, verse 6 again. Songs of Solomon chapter 1. I will look here at uh, verse 6. Look not upon me because I'm black. Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of vineyards. They made me. And I couldn't resist they made me, they imposed that on me. They said, this you must do. This you must do. They want to walk the willing horse to death. The fellow does not have time to even take care of his own spiritual life. But he doesn't mind, but they made me keep our vineyards. And my own vineyard have I not kept. I've spoken about Gideon. I've spoken about Jehu. Finally, in this point, I'm going to look at Solomon himself. Who wrote, I'm sure you know, who wrote the song of Solomon? Tell me out loud. Tell me, let me hear. Solomon. Let's look at this Solomon. They made me keep our vineyards. They made me keep our vineyards. And my own vineyard have I not kept. That man did not keep his soul. Look at uh, First Kings chapter 11. Wise man. Wise man. Wise to counsel other people. Wise to write the book of Proverbs and read that uh, book of Proverbs. A lot of wisdom there coming from the Lord through Solomon. Wise to write. Wise to preach. Ecclesiastes. He says, is the preacher. And the preacher says, vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Wise to preach. Wise to write. Wise to counsel. Wise in administration. He made all those people. He said, you will go to the press and cut wood two, uh, two months. And then come back to your family one month. And this other set will go. That other set will go. He was also wise to press. He just loaded it on the people. And when he died, the people said, thank God the man is dead. Thank God that man is gone. Then he came to his son and he said, son, the yoke was heavy. Ready to be about your wife. Your father was so wise that if we try to bring out an excuse, if we try to say, let's end this thing, he will use his wisdom to load it on us again. Now the man is gone. Please, you are the son. We will serve you, but let's end this load. The thing is too much. And the son said, go away and let me talk to my bodies, my people, and then I'll come back, I'll come back three days, I'll give you an answer. And then those young people said, go tell them. If they come, that the little finger of your father, or your own little finger, will be, will be bigger than his, uh, than his uh, thumb. And it, it, it kind of a smooth shoe with ordinary weave, with scorpion, I'm going to deal with you. Who do you think you're dealing with? I'm going to make your Lord greater. They said, Oh, Israel. Go your way to your houses, back to your tents. We cannot bear more than this. You see, this man, Solomon, he was busy, busy on this and this and this. Look at First Kings now, chapter eleven. Solomon, Solomon. We're looking at First Kings chapter eleven. I'm reading from verse one. 
Here he tells us in verse 1 about uh, this man, but King Solomon bought, 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 but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh. And, and then he goes on to say women of the Moabites and the Ammonites and the Edomites and the Sidonians and the Hittites, Solomon, of the nations concerning which the Lord had said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall, shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart at all the gods, and Solomon clave unto these in love, busy Solomon. Busy building temple, busy building a house, busy building the royal palace. And look at this man, no time to take care of his own soul. Look at verse 3, and he, he had 700 wives, princess, and 300 concubines, and uh, his uh, wives turned away his heart. His heart. It's your soul. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul? You know, he collected all of them together. 1,700 plus 300 women. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wife turned away his heart after all the gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord is God I go to come to verse 5 it says for Solomon went after Hashtoreth the goddess of the Zidonians and after Milcom uh, the abomination of the Ammonites and then it says in verse 6 and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord what is the wisdom in the man what is the spirituality in the man? And where is the pilgrimage, the heart to be on a pilgrim in the man? What is the desire for heaven in the man? Everything is gone. And where is the counseling that his father gave him? Solomon, my son, let your heart be perfect for the Lord. If you follow after the Lord, he will have heaven on you. If you forsake the Lord, he will forsake you forever and ever. What, what did he make use of? Of all the counseling his father gave him. The counseling that he himself gave Proverbs chapter 1. My son, if sinners entice thee, a uh, concern down not Solomon that's your preaching that's your message what have you done with that the man was too busy that he could not see that what am I doing in what direction am I going Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and he went not fully after the Lord as did David his father then did Solomon build a high place of Kim for Chemosh the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem and Molech and the abomination of the children of Ammon, likewise did he for all his strange wives. How many strangers did they have? 700. And likewise did he, he, he built only one temple for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He built 700 temples. The money that God provided. The riches. God, God said, because you have asked for wisdom, you ask for understanding, I'm going to give you that. I will also give you riches. You'll be, ri you'll be richer than all the people that lay before you and all the people are going to live after you. He spent that money building shrine and temple and synagogue and tabernacle for all these other idols. Solomon. Be seen. The children of my mother, they were angry at me. And they made me keeper of vineyards and my own vineyard. Have I not cared? Look at verse 8. And likewise did he to all the strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto the gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. Of course, of course, of course. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because he knew all these good, good things, but he himself could not do them. He did not keep his own vineyard. I'm asking you today, how are you spending your life? Can we excuse you from this committee and this committee so that you go to just one committee? Can we excuse you from, you know, Monday study is there. Monday Bible study. Everybody has to be there. Tuesday for the leaders, we have to be there. And then Wednesday, there's another thing you put there, which we didn't put there. And Thursday, that's for revival. And you still have your own work. You still have to go to, you know, your office and go for your company and go whatever. You have to wake up early in the morning in our city in Lagos here because if you don't wake up early in the morning you're not going to get to the office in good time there's no quiet time in the morning you are rushing you go there you take your lunch with 
you during break you try to buy uh, something and then as you are finishing work you go straight to the church local church because if you go to the house first you'll be late or whatever program you have there Thursday you're busy Friday you're busy Saturday of course now from 10 11 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock in the night you're busy you are a mother you have children your mother you have teenage children and your teenage children never have any influence from you because you know children I promised the Lord before you were born I said I was going to serve the Lord I am serving the Lord uh -huh. and that's why they are getting pregnant now as teenagers nobody is taking care of them that's why those boys are impregnating ladies nobody is taking care of them father is not their mother is not and of course on Sunday if you want to come to your children follow me be there because I must be there before the service begins and then after the service now you have somewhere to go something committee you go to another committee and then you come back at 10 o'clock in the night on Sunday Monday you start all over again when are you going to prepare for heaven who made you the keeper of these vineyards and your own vineyard you are not keeping and if we try to reorganize and we try to say now we are going to reorganize everything but during this uh, mini congress choir people please we love you we appreciate you go and sit down there and listen to those messages there is no there's no singing well we accept that with a pinch of salt well maybe that's good intention maybe not but how are we going to take care of ourselves workers retreat choir must sing congress choir must sing retreat choir must sing monday choir must sing sunday choir must sing the same people these same people belong to that committee belong to that committee belong to that committee when do they take care of their families when do they take care of their personal lives when they take care of their personal work and profession that's what we're saying that even as wise as solomon was he couldn't hold everything together that's why the lord is calling us to wisdom this year we're going to be wise I preach to others, I need to preach to myself too. I'm preparing you for heaven, I need to prepare myself for heaven too. That's the reason why we moderate everything. So that by the grace of God, when the trumpet shall sound, and the saints go marching in, by the grace of God, preaching will not tie me down. I will not be like Jehu, I will not be like Gideon, I will not be like Solomon. As I'm preparing other people, I'm getting prepared, I'll go there too somebody there are you getting there are you getting the point i'm making this day because that's what the lord is telling us he said what will it be if we gain all the you know we gain all the souls and win all the souls and he said praise the lord our gs is energetic at his age you know he preaches he's just finished the congress now we hear that he's also in japan he has gone to china and then he rushes back on saturday and the man is still fresh wonderful uh -uh, that is not wonderful the man you don't want to kill the man internally spiritually you want him to have some little time i will not be like this solomon say it for yourself i will not be like jehu i'll not be like gideon balance up everything in your life this year is a year of balance and this year the word of god will work mightily in our lives in jesus name and if we try to help you and we say cut it down cut those activities down cut it down cut those committee meetings down don't grudge us i'm trying to help you to get to heaven you will get there i say don't belong to two committees at the same time let this person do it other people are look at these thousands of people we have many of them fitting this one here this one there this one there lessen your own load shed the load and give it to other people so that all of us can bear the load together and eventually every one of us every one of us the people i see here today look up at me here we are going to get to heaven together i'm looking at point number three now spiritual profit and progress of new Bible believing pilgrims, spiritual profit and progress of Bible believing Christians. We will make it. We're looking at a first a Timothy. We're looking at first Timothy. We're reading from chapter four and verse eight. First Timothy chapter four, and we're looking at verse eight. First Timothy chapter four. And we're looking at verse 8. It tells us in chapter 4, verse 8, it says, For bodily exercise profited little. 
But godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Having the promise of the life which is now is, and of that which is to come. Then it tells us in verse 15 and verse 16, it says, Meditate upon these things. We don't have time to meditate because meditation takes time. That meditate upon these things and keep thyself wholly unto them, wholly unto the word of God, the word that saves and the word that sanctifies and the word that strengthens and empowers you. Give yourself to that, that your profiting may appear unto all. Stop there for a moment. Meditate on this word, all that we're hearing, so that this year we're going to make progress. And they will say that's a pilgrim, it's a renewed pilgrim, that's a pilgrim, it's a nourished pilgrim, that's a pilgrim, it's not a negligent pilgrim. Look at verse 16. Take heed to thyself and unto the, unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. It's not just enough to hear the word of God, you will process it internalize it, personalize it and say this is me and this is mine. It will be yours in Jesus name. We're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 I'm looking at verse 1. It says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Lest any of you should seem to come short of it. Look at verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not mix, did not profit them. The word preached did not profit them. Because, why? Not be mixed with faith in them that heard that gospel, that heard the word. Can you think of people that had the word and the word did not profit them? I can think of some. Achan. Achan had all the instructions that Joshua gave out when they were to go to that battlefield. The word did not profit him. He had something else on his mind. And because of what he had on his mind, that word that Joshua preached did not, did not help him. He said, when I saw the word of gold and the goodly Babylonian garment, and then I coveted and took and hid it in my tent. And you think of Ahab. Ahab had all the words of Elijah. Elijah said, see, the Lord has sent me to you and he gave him the message. The word did not profit him. Why? Because his wife was a strong influence on him. That man sold himself to do evil because of his wife. How about Balaam? Balaam had the word of God. Balaam saw an angel and Balaam saw the angel with the sword in the hand. The word he heard from the angel did not profit him. Why? Because of covetousness. That thing was still in the heart. Covetousness ate him up. Hey, but Lot's wife, the word that Lot's wife heard did not profit her. Why? You, angels came, laid hold on them and said, escape to the mountain. This city is going to be destroyed. But the word that uh, that uh, woman had did not profit her because of worldliness. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Moses spoke the word of God to them. Are you seeking the priesthood? Look at this. See what the Lord has given us. The Lord is leading us from the land of Egypt unto the promised land. Are you, are you seeking the priesthood also? Korah did not listen and the ground opened up and just swallowed them up. I about Jezebel, that woman was power drunk. Power drunk. You know, if you are power drunk, you want to be in control. You want to be in charge. You want to not only control, you know, your husband. You want to control Elijah. Control the nation and tell your Ahab what Ahab has to do. The woman was power drawn. All the word that she heard did not profit her. And I was thinking about Judas Iscariot of all people. Every message Jesus gave. Every miracle Jesus performed. Every parable that Jesus told. Judas is God heard everything and he was not just an ordinary member of the team, he was the treasurer, he was a back carrier and he could, you know, give his hand there and pay this out and pay this out even the one that he wasn't supposed to pay out, he did all that but everything here, he even at the personal work, one of you is going to betray me, am I, am I am I, and Judas is God said is it me? And Jesus said, yes, you are. I'm going to give this uh, in food. I'm going to put it in the mouth of the betrayer. He put it in his mouth. That did not change him. The words he hear did not profit him because he did not mix with faith in his heart. And demons, because of 
friendship with the world. Demas had all those all those uh, messages of Paul the apostle. Did not profit him. He still went to Seneca, and then he went into the world. How about you? What you have been hearing? Has he profited you? Are you making up your mind that this year will be different? This salvation that we have been we're emphasizing, emphasizing, and the peace of God in our heart, and whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, this one, I'm going to take it to heart this year. What other assignment do you have that is greater than watching over your soul? What other assignment do you have that is greater than keeping your soul for heaven? What other assignment have you given yourself? What assignment has somebody given you that is greater than getting saved, getting sanctified, and possessing this peace of God and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? What do you think is better than salvation, better than sanctification? What do you do in the church? What responsibility do you have in the church? The one we gave you, the one we didn't give you, that is so important to you, more than your getting to heaven. How wise are you? Are you in pilgrim? Are you in wise pilgrim? Are you going to get to heaven? Or have you lost your sense of direction completely? I pray that this day you'll get it back in Jesus' name. We're looking at Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Here I'm reading from verse 37. Or to back up to verse 36. At Mark chapter 8, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? This day, the Lord is calling us to wisdom. We're going to be wise. If you are backsliding, you'll come back and say, Lord, now I mean business. This heaven, I will get to heaven. Hell, I've heard about hell. Jesus spoke about hell. It's a place where fire is burning. It will be forever and ever. Once anybody gets in there, no way. He'll never come out. He'll be forever there, suffering and burning. I've heard of heaven. And Jesus spoke of heaven. And there's glory there. There's joy there. There's no thirst there. There's no need there. And those who are there are happy and joyful forever and ever. And once endure all the temptation, all the trial, whatever may be happening here on earth, once you get to heaven, you are there forever and ever. You'll forget your sorrows. You'll forget your tears. You'll forget your heartaches. You'll forget all the problems you had here on earth. That heaven, I will get there. That heaven, you will get there. You want to rise and tell the Lord. Rise up and tell the Lord that day from this day, you want to be wise. From this day, you want to be a pilgrim. A pilgrim that says I'm focused. A pilgrim that says I'm fiery. A pilgrim that says I'm, I'm facing the direction of my travel. I want to get to heaven. I want to get to heaven. Let this word mix with faith in your heart. Let this peace of God be there. Make sure you're safe. Let this purity be there. Let make sure you're sanctified and then if you are saved and sanctified the power of the Holy Ghost available this morning and it will fill you with the Holy Ghost you have baptized the Holy Ghost before why don't you plunge yourself again into the ocean of the Spirit of God so that all the power you need all the strength you need everything you need will be given unto you so that this day the Lord himself will do something unforgettable in your life talk to the Lord talk to the Lord don't be too busy don't have your mind on activity 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 and you are not able to settle with the Lord settle it with the Lord right now